Welcome to the Preakness edition of the Friday Show, brought to you by the Grade 2 $500,000 Pen Mile. I'm Scott Jagow, along with Ray Pollock. We are at a special location for this Friday Show. That would be the Baltimore Harbor, where they've just opened the Sagamore Spirit Distillery. It is a beautiful facility. It's connected to Sagamore Farm, where they have, obviously, a long history in thoroughbred racing. And it's right next to Under Armour, which is also, of course, connected to Sagamore. We'll learn more about it in a moment. First, let's talk some Preakness, Ray. Always dreaming, settled in right after winning the Derby. He seems like he's doing well and is going to be a strong favorite in this race. Yeah, I mean, Todd Pletcher was confident going into the Derby. He seems more confident now going into the Preakness. I've never seen him this relaxed before, but uh, you know, we give him a hard time all the time about his, he was one for 45 going into the Kentucky Derby. Now he's two for 48, that's a little better. But he's 0 for eight in the Preakness. That is true. And then, <laughs> nobody seems to be talking about that. He doesn't usually send a runners to the Preakness, obviously. Right. So he doesn't have strong contenders normally either. So there's that, um, you know, he did, the owners after the after the race said no way are you shaving that goatee that you've been growing so i asked terry finley of west point thoroughbreds one of the partners if he had any superstitions heading into the preakness one thing but you can't publish this uh, but um i i have my black shoes they're good black shoes good leather shoes i got them shined right before the derby i did the walkover it was a sloppy racetrack they're, they're a mess I, I didn't touch them, and I brought them here in, a, in a, a plastic bag. So I'm thinking that there's a pretty good shot I'll slip those suckers on when we do the walkover for the Preakness. But other than that, I'm part of the team, and uh, I think we're going to have a good day Saturday. <laughs> Terry assured me that he was joking about not publishing it. Uh, anyway, Classic Empire seems to be everyone's second choice in this race, 3-1 to one morning line. He really had a bad trip in the Derby. Yeah, he did right from the start. You know, I did, he just got slammed at the beginning. He had cakes of mud thrown on him. He was way out in the middle of the track, you know, turned into the stretch so wide. And the funny thing is, you know, the, the rail was where you wanted to be and he was eight paths out or whatever. The funny thing is he really kept trying the whole way. He made a, he made a decent move and down the stretch, he was still going at it. So that was a big race, I thought. I, I agree. And uh, the pace scenario in the Preakness is interesting because always dreaming uh, has speed, he has tactical speed. Conquest Mo Money is drawn outside and he's got some speed, right. so I think he's going to cut over and that's going to be the, the two up front. However, Classic Empire, while he closed in the Derby and he closed in the Arkansas Derby, mm -hmm. is not a closer by nature. And trainer Mark Cassie tends to agree with that. If he breaks, he can be on the lead or right close to it. So, and that's the one nice part about the post position. Um, you know, if, if always dreaming's up running, running easy on the lead, uh, Julian will probably go after him a little earlier, or if they're running up there, he can sit behind him. Um, I think I, I love the post position. I love the two horses being together, but I wouldn't have liked it as much if we were four and he was five. I've been around him for a long time. His energy level's really good right now. He's going out there, he's on the bridle. He's, he's full of himself galloping. So. I'm actually a little more excited for this race than the Derby. I thought we had a good shot to win the Derby, but I thought everything had to go perfect. Um, obviously, you want things to go perfect here as well, but I think we're sitting on a bigger race uh, on Saturday. And Classic Empire really does kind of fit the profile of a horse that wins the Preakness, having a stalking trip perhaps, making that move on the turn, and then uh, running down the, the front runner. The question is, will always dreaming uh, let anyone catch him? <laughs> Right. Was well, there anybody else that we should uh, talk about here? In fact, there is. I'm the hootinest, tootinest, shootinest, bobtail wildcat in the West. <laughs> the new, the new shooters. <laughs> Everybody wants to make a case for the new shooter. The horses that didn't run in the Kentucky Derby, they don't have a chance. These new horses are not going to hit the board. Not going to be first, second, third, or fourth. Forget about it. Wow, not even the Superfecta, huh? Well, only three of the last 27 winners of the Preakness didn't run in the Derby, so that's what history says. 
Uh, I think there are two that are interesting. One is Multiplier, trained by Brendan Walsh, who's an up-and-coming guy from Ireland. Talked to him this week. He likes his horse. He knows what he's up against. The multiplier ran a big race in the Illinois Derby. Cloud Computing. I think you can throw out Irish War Prize Derby. Um, watch out for him later on. Like a lot of the horses in the Derby, they got stuck on the outside and in the, the gummy surface at Churchill Downs. So Cloud Computing also one to pay attention to to hit the board, in my opinion. Now, let's talk some whiskey. That's my I didn't. I didn't realize the, the history in Maryland with rye whiskey. You know, in Kentucky, it's right. all about bourbon. But here there's a long history. And, and with Sagamore Spirit, there's a connection, an actual connection to Sagamore Farm, Kevin Plank's farm. Yeah, it's really cool. And this facility is state of the art. We got a little tour and learned more about Sagamore Spirit. There's an incredible tradition of rye whiskey in Maryland. Before Prohibition, there were 44 distilleries in Maryland. And in downtown Baltimore, arguably 21 of them were here. And I think it was back in 1939, uh, Maryland was making almost 110 million gallons of whiskey. And during World War II, all of those distilleries converted to ethanol plants to support the war effort, and none of them ever converted back. And so we're here at Sagamore Spirit to put Maryland back on the map as a premier distiller of rye whiskey. So there is a connection between Sagamore Farm and the distillery. Yes, a very important one. Out at Sagamore Farm, which is about 22 miles from here, uh, sits a spring house and it was built in 1909 and that spring house sits on a limestone aquifer and water bubbles up from beneath the bottom of the spring house and we take that water which has been filtered through the limestone and use that to cut each bottle of whiskey to proof. It's a very unique water, spring fed, it is full of calcium and uh, all that limestone helps cut out the iron so it's perfect for making whiskey. And your involvement in the in the Preakness is what? Yes, we are the official rye whiskey of Preakness, which we're very excited to be for the second year in a row. And we also have got a great cocktail for Preakness steaks. It's our take on the Black Eyed Susan. It's called the Black Eyed Rye. It's made with a blackberry simple syrup, some mint, lime juice, uh, ginger beer, and of course, Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey. After our tour, I did get my very own bottle of Sagamore Spirit, which I put the label on, number 575, and it's got my initials. So I'm pretty excited about that. You can get it in any one of 13 states. Certainly if you're here in Baltimore, visit this new facility, it's beautiful. Uh, but you can also get it in a number of other states, uh, Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey. All right, well, let's get to our Preakness picks. And let me just say first, I did not sample it before I did my handicapping for the, the whiskey. Preakness. I was completely <laughs> I'm not so I, sure about right. that. Well, let's hear it. All right. I talked about Classic Empire's rough trip in the Kentucky Derby, but what I didn't realize until I went back and watched the race a couple more times is that horse really ran a big race. He ran a big race. He came into the Derby as an equal to Always Dreaming, I kind of felt, and Always Dreaming had everything go his way. Classic Empire had nothing go his way. Classic Empire will win the Preakness. Gunavera is going to sneak up for second and Always Dreaming will be third. Mm. No Triple Crown winner this year. Okay, well, I, I think in hindsight, Always Dreaming was a fantastic bet in the Derby, which we've missed, because uh, it turns out at nine to two, that was a pretty good price. At four to five in the Preakness is not. Yeah. Strictly from a betting perspective, I, I can't put him on top. I'm gonna go with Gunavera. Uh, you know, I don't like agreeing with you about Classic Empire, even though I do like him. <laughs> but Gunavera, if Mike Smith can get that horse to get going a little right. sooner, because you have to in the Preakness, he's got a devastating turn of foot. And his last two races to me, the Derby and, and in Florida, I think he'd throw both of them out because the track bias was against right. Gunavera. Gunavera in a big upset at the Preakness for me. That is going to do it for this edition of the Friday Show. Brought to you by the Grade 2 $500,000 Penn Mile, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. That's right. It's always a, a good race. Yeah. They attract good horses. The purse is fantastic. Great turf, you know, great turf race uh, this time of year. Yeah, it's Penn National's biggest day of the year. I went there a couple years ago. Chad Brown was there. The Ramsey sent a horse there. It's a big day of racing for Penn National. The Great Two Penn Mile is a good race. All right, and thanks again to Sagamore Spirit for letting us uh, do the Friday show from here. That's going to do it for the Preakness edition. Thanks so much for joining us. Good luck and enjoy the Preakness.